स्वागत है साधन के एक नए वीडियो में जहां हम करते हैं बिजनेसेस और सेक्टर्स को सिंप्लीफाई सो so, आज हम लोगों ने एक ऐसा सब सेक्टर चूज़ किया है जिस पे बहुत दिनों से डिस्कशन पेंडिंग था दोस्तों मैं बात कर रहा हूँ रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी का फ्यूचर हम कैसे देखते हैं तो द स्टोरी सो फार वी नो दैट सोलर हैज़ बीन अ सनराइज सेक्टर सो इस वीडियो में मैं आपसे बात करूँगा कि सोलर के लिए क्या पॉलिसी सपोर्ट आ रही है या पॉलिसी में किस तरीके का रोड ब्लॉक मिल रहा है इस पे हम चर्चा करेंगे साथ ही अदर ऑल्टरनेटिव सोर्सेस ऑफ एनर्जी जैसे पंप्ड हाइड्रो ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन और बी जिसके बारे में काफ़ी बज चल रहा है बी में क्या पॉसिबिलिटीज हैं हाउ गवर्नमेंट इज लुकिंग एट इट वेदर द पॉलिसी सपोर्ट्स आर अवेलेबल टू दिस सेक्टर और नॉट और किस तरीके का पॉलिसी सपोर्ट जो है वो इंडस्ट्री को पुश कर सकता है टू इन्वेस्ट इन टू बी एस एस और लेसे ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन और पम्प्ड हाइड्रोजन सो दिस फिफ्टीन मिनट्स वीडियो इज गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन टू यू कि अभी फिलहाल किस ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन में सबसे अच्छी अपॉर्चुनिटी देखने को मिल सकती है सो दैट यू कैन डिग डीपर एंड फाइंड आउट विच बिजनेसेस टू रीड अबाउट सो वी आर ओपनिंग अप दिस सेक्टर फ्रॉम अ ट्रांसमिशन एंगल परस्पेक्टिव बिकॉज ट्रांसमिशन इज वन एरिया जहाँ पे जिस पे डिपेंडेंट होती है जो भी जनरेटिंग कंपनीज होती हैं डिफरेंट रिन्यूएबल पावर एनर्जीज कंपनीज स्टैंड अलॉन कनॉट एग्जिस्ट विदाउट द सपोर्ट फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ वेवर ऑफ ISTS, एस टी एस विच इज इंटर स्टेट ट्रांसमिशन चार्जेस तो ये आई एस टी एस क्या होता है और डिफरेंट डिफरेंट ग्रीन कैटेगरीज के लिए इसका क्या मतलब है सो दैट वी कैन लुक अहेड इन फ्यूचर कि ट्वेंटी थर्टी टू तक विच ऑफ दीज कम्पीटिंग टेक्नोलॉजी वन बींग विंड अदर बींग सोलर हाइब्रिड बी एस एस पम्प्ड हाइड्रो ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन ऑफ शोर विंड किस टेक्नोलॉजी में फ्यूचर लाइक कर रहा है सो इट इज गोइंग टू बी एक्सप्लेनेटरी वीडियो दिस इज अ पार्ट ऑफ अ ऑन गोइंग ट्रेनिंग ऑन ट्रांसमिशन सेक्टर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एक्सेस द फोर्टी मिनट्स वीडियो विच वी हैव शेयर्ड विद आवर मेम्बर्स यू कैन ज्वाइन चैनल मेंबरशिप एंड द लिंक्स आर गिवेन जस्ट बिसाइड द सब्सक्राइब बटन दिस वीडियो इज अवेलेबल फॉर देम सो लुक फॉरवर्ड टू सी यू देयर एज अ क्लोजर कम्युनिटी ग्रुप on our channel the ists is interstate transmission system so when you transmit power from delhi to let's say haryana or vice versa then the infrastructure has to be there which is common between them so there you have to pay ists transmission charges so the sharing and everything will be determined between these two guys and there is a law behind it but there is a carve out given to all the green energy technology so we are in july 2025 right now and here orange line is bess and, and uh, this formed hydro station so i'll tell you what is bess is before i introduce uh, other things so bess is battery energy storage system basically grid stability has to be there so grid stability is enhanced by putting hybrid power and also it can further enhanced by putting battery in place so what battery will do it will store the surplus power rather than giving it to grid so it will store the power from from the time of generation till when the demand comes so they they will park for 2 hours power capability so let's say 100 megawatt power i'm producing through solar or through solar plus wind also hybrid so i will have a 2 hour of backup of battery so out of 24 hours effectively i'll be producing 10 12 hours only but i will store that for 2 hours and then that 2 hours storage will be used for for when the demand peak out what i'm doing is i'm reducing the grid load through battery so bss is going to be there as the graph suggests you can see they they have got a 100% ists transmission charges waiver so this is left hand side you can see and this is this is valid till july 2028 till june 2028 they are valid so they don't have to pay any ists charges and ists charges are typically 1 to 1 to 2 rupees so if a ppa is typically signed for solar for let's say 3 rupees 4 rupees then 1 to 2 rupees is the additional cost above which which is waived off uh, so out of 4 rupees as a ipp if i am getting from a my solar 4 rupees a unit actually ideally i should pay 1 to 2 rupees to the guy whom i am sending it to if i am sending it to other country other state but i as a solar guy right now i don't have to give because solar ka bhi aap dekh lo solar is till june 30th june 2025 it is 100% but this is a slight slope it is going to be 75% then 50% then 25% by july 28 it would be at par with thermal power plan so 30th june 2028 is the date through which the preferential treatment for solar will end and iske pehle this was a 100% subsidy so i have witnessed 10 years when ists charges were zero now i'm seeing this charges are going up to 100% 
from 100 to 0 as a waiver. So with 0 to 100, they are moving as a charge billable to the IPP, to the guy who is selling the power. So this will have an economic impact and a kind of a signaling which will not be favorable for green energy, so to say. But uh, now government thinks that solar and wind and hydro have kind of matured. So th those three big big brothers are put in one bracket where their waiver are going to be waived off. Waiver will be uh, repealed. So that that's uh, that's the new uh, paradigm. We'll we'll see how it impacts. But I think it's not favorable for these three big sectors. But BESS has a three-year carve out. Green hydrogen is also a bigger carve out till 2030. So from 2030 onwards, 2034, it will come down from 100 to zero. Again, offshore wind, which is further two year down. So it looks like government has an agenda of giving seven, eight years of uh, a free runway till they become sustainable. And then uh, this charges would apply. It is subject to lobbying. Actually, if mm -hmm. developers uh, Put put force behind uh, and they, they they can push it. They can uh, from zero from they right now they will be wearing uh, twenty five percent for next year right. uh, on paper. So which means fifty paisa. So three rupees ka ta power. If you are increasing a cost of uh, three fifty paisa, then you are realizing it two rupees fifty paisa. So for your profitability might get a hit. Whether they have built it or not on the financial model, that is their lookout. I'm sure they would have built it because this was there in the policy for some time that after this time we will wave it off the way it is right now. But obviously if they think that, okay, please do it and all those things, well, <laughs> that request has to be put forth. So there is a chance that this may get extended by one, two years. I will right. not be surprised. It is a CTU, Central Transmission Unit, which controls this. There is a, something called a kitty bag is built. So 10 years back when I was funding my first ISTS project. So what was happening that my cash flow as a lender was coming from kitty purse, which right. is built. Gujarat will put some money. So whatever ISTS charges they would collect, they would put some portion to the CTU that park this for whoever you want to pay. Mm -hmm. So they will pay it to the original uh, Adani transmission and uh, SL transmission hour and all. So their model should work. So ultimately it will move to the transmission company, but from a generation and power companies like Renew, if Renew mm -hmm. is building up a power plant in, uh, let's say in Jaipur and supplying it to, let's say Gujarat, then so the PPA is already tied with Gujarat for, let's say three rupees. There is a negotiation. If there's a Gujarat co company, let's say, Industries is trying to buy Renew Power. Then there will be a negotiation between Industries and Renew that, okay, since your state charges this much, 50, 50 paisa. So you have to uh, give 50 paisa or 20 paisa more to me. So this way, this can settle, but ultimately between customer and, and most of the time the customer are discom. So I don't know who will, <laughs> who will budget. In private sector still, there is a chances that Renew and all will put force that, okay, no, you have to be a rate and all. A uh, clearly a uh, carve out to BESS and bombed hydro projects, which is another form of hydro power. But here it's a, a totally artificial pumped uh, hydro. So what happens that you get a huge mass of land. What you need to do is you need to create a structure of something like 20, 30 meters. Uh, you need to build one plate uh, 20 meters above and one plate below that. So you need to build two plateaus. You have to put a pump. Uh, you store the water on that per table. And you need to flow that water from high to lower height and the turbine has to move. So the moving turbine will create electricity and you can send it to anyone you want to. And then again, use that power you produce to produce uh, to kind of uh, use a pump to pump it back. So water will flow back to the source and then it fall and it will flow back. And so daytime may you need to do downward journey and nighttime may you need to do the upward travel. So this whole cycle will pay out during 24 hours and this pumped hydro system works, but it requires huge capital. Even only two companies I know, three companies I know which are, which are doing it seriously. One is uh, Greenco, which is uh, AM Green Energy now. It's a Singapore based uh, group. Then Tata Power and the SW Energy. So these three have the muscles to do this because they, it requires huge land, huge capital. And even technology, technology is not that difficult, but pumped and all those setup and all those things, turbines and all. So it's a, it is some time away. So it has been given a carve out, but it's a growth area for this sector. So what are the trends? If we just look at the numbers, uh, so as we speak, we have around 220 gigawatt of renewable power in the mix, out of which 48% is solar. So roughly 100 gigawatt is solar. This is the installation trend. So this is 220 gigawatt installed uh, capacity out of which 50% is solar, around 50%. Then 23% is wind. 
large hydro is 22% small hydro is barely 2% and uh, this biopower and all this which is other items out of 220 megawatt installation is total installation so far solar continue to be the major contributor with 48% followed by wind and uh, this uh, about 105 gigawatt of solar and 50 gigawatt of wind capacities are there so overall country wide we have 100 gigawatt of solar 50 of wind and pipeline of combined capacity of solar wind and hybrid projects are around 143 gigawatt so this is 220 and another 143 is a pipeline so if we look at right hand side that then uh, commissioned is 105 solar 50 wind and uh, pipeline may there are 70 solar 18 gigawatt into wind is in pipeline and 50 megawatt into hybrid so as uh, as we highlighted before that hybrid is the new growth area so hybrid is basically solar plus wind so there's a additional layer where wind will go up so uh, solar will also go up so both of them is like 1 plus 1 and another half for them and the rest of it is pumped hydro which is far in future another 66 gigawatt are under bidding phase so there is three stages one is pipeline which is already bid out and uh, you know, who is making is established who will buy is established but under bidding stage is also good amount is there so which is around uh, 66 gigawatt so uh, if we look at closely then approximately 29 megawatt is uh, capacity addition of tender uh, this makes 56% increase from 18.4 gigawatt so the tender stage under bidding stage has grown by 56% so this renewable energy is still growing at 56% and i am looking at future future because this is under bidding which is which will come next year in pipeline or maybe uh, so so that is growing so that's why we are bullish on uh, this sector put together because the growth rate are 56% and all this capacity of increase will be crucial for india's to reach this goal of 500 gigawatt of renewable energy by 2030 but it requires 50 gigawatt addition each year till 2030 so that's the landscape so the outlook looks like that there are good days for wind solar ke good days to hain but wind segment is something which is looking pumped up because 4 gigawatt last time kiya tha last year now we are looking at 6 gigawatt uh, to be added in fy26 so this is the energy outlook thanks for watching and if you want that we should deep dive into some other sector like this then let me know in the comment which sector we should deep dive into so that that could benefit you as a viewer and that's what our motto is to simplify investing for once and all thanks for being a support and do comment ye video aapko kaisa laga thank you content of this video is for educational and informational purposes only and should not be considered financial investment or trading advice the information presented is not a recommendation or endorsement of any particular investment strategy security or financial decision investing involves risks and viewers should conduct their own research the create this video is not responsible for any financial losses incurred based on the information provided